What's up everybody out there? So this is going to be more like a testimonial uh, video than a show how or how to or fix it video. Um, I have, I just kind of want to tell everybody about this in case somebody else is going through this same thing uh, and you want to fix yours. Uh, this is kind of what happened to mine. So you can see here we've got wires. This is all the stuff that I ordered from Amazon in order to fix my Ender 3. Uh, now the Ender 3 has a little spot on it and I'll show you guys that. The motor needs this little bracket here or another mount. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, you can use whichever one you like or want to print. Um, but it doesn't like go going up and down forever because the actual Z screw, uh, as you bring it up and down, it moves out and back in. And so eventually uh, it causes the motor to go out. And so when my Z motor had a problem, I immediately thought that that was it. And I put a different mount than this one into it at first, and it, and it worked for a few um, cycles, for a few prints. And then it stopped working, started making a really loud nah, 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 sound every time that it would go, and it wasn't actually going up. Um, little did I know that the actual motor, uh, it wasn't burned out, which is what I initially thought because I troubleshooted it. I thought the motor was going out. Sometimes this would turn and this would go up and down and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, and when it made that noise it would kind of just do this whole thing and it wouldn't go up. And then it got to a point where it wouldn't go up at all and I put a print on and it just buried plastic into that print over and over and over again because it wouldn't go uh, any higher because it stopped turning. Uh, so what I initially did at first is I bought not one but two motors because that's what I initially thought it was and when you're troubleshooting uh, you, you kind of check everything on it and when I looked at the wires the wires were fine um, the connection wires were fine and I laid the Z screw on the table and kind of rolled it and you could tell that it was straight as a whistle I mean it was perfect and so my troubleshooting led me to believe that the motor was going out and so I not only ordered it, I ordered the, a brand new one, and it did the same thing with that, so I thought maybe I just got a dud and ordered another one, and did the same thing. Three, I mean, you could order a dud, I guess, have a motor out, order a dud, and, you know, that's bad luck. But three of them doing the exact same thing, you know, for sure it's not the motor anymore. And so I thought maybe um, the Z-screw itself had a little bit of a problem in it and maybe I just wasn't seeing it and so I ordered a new Z-screw uh, a Z-screw that had this instead of this one uh, make sure you don't get this rounded one because it doesn't fit uh, and the screw itself had just the the threads were just a tad off um, so it didn't work um, so I ordered another one uh, which is the one you see here. This one's brand new. Um, and put that on. And in the process, the original uh, one of these ended up screwing up. It's a shaft coupler. The original one that was on the thing stripped out. The bolts ended up stripping out. So I ordered this, and you get two of them. Uh, so the other one's actually on the printer at the moment. And this one's actually a lot better uh, with stronger screws and stuff. And so. You know, if you're doing a lot of work with the Z screw, I would plan on getting another one of these because too much tightening and untightening those those bolts in the original one will strip it out. Found out quickly that it wasn't this, and at this point, it actually wasn't doing anything at all. And so what I did is I took all of these motors, all of them, and I opened up this part under here uh, to check the connection and just run the actual Z cord to the motor itself, unmounted, on un anything. And if you want to test that out and just plug it straight in, when you want it to stop, all you got to do is push this down. So that stops the motor. Um, so that's what I did. And I checked the wire, oh, the wire and the connection over and over and over again, and they looked fine. And I checked them with a, uh, I checked her with a device that, that checks for, uh, I can't think of the name of the of the tool now, but there's a tool <laughs> where you can check to see if the cord has any shorts and stuff in it, and it was fine. the The cord was fine. 
In fact, I've, I've got it right here. I, I cut this off because, if you know, all the wires are put together in one sleeve, and I didn't want to have to cut that off. So this wouldn't fit through the other end, so I just chopped that off um, and then just pulled it through. But you can look at this wire, and it's perfectly fine the entire way up. And even checking it with the device, I was perfectly fine, and there was no shorts. So I don't know what it was, but in the last desperation, this is all it could be. Unless the actual connection itself and the board itself was was the problem. It's the only other thing I could think of. Um, so I went and bought, you can buy these on Amazon right here. And I'll leave links to all, this, all these spare parts in the description so you guys can get to them. Um, you can buy this. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like 12 bucks or something like that. Don't quote me. Um, and this comes with the Z cord as well. Every cord you need for the Ender 3. And so I took that cord plugged it into the plugged it into the connection, unplugged this one, took this one out, and then plugged it into each one of these motors, and each one of these motors spun perfectly fine. No noise, no nothing. Um, so it was the cord. Not the connection, the cord itself was the problem. And I would have, troubleshooting, I mean, I would have never figured that out just because the, the cord was perfect. I checked everything, even at the very beginning. Uh, of this. That's the first thing that you do during troubleshooting is you check the connections, you check the wiring. Uh, if it's a short, it's an easier fix. You don't have to buy anything if you don't want to, if you just want to repair it. So that's part of troubleshooting and so it led me to believe that the cord was fine and I moved on to everything else. So had I had I just switched this out in the first place, um, I would, probably wouldn't have had to buy all this stuff which can get a little pricey because I think this is around twenty dollars each one of these is uh, twenty some dollars um, a coupler I think it's about for two of these is like ten something twelve something and the wiring I think is twelve something so um, th these shouldn't be here and then all the time it took me to put them in test them see that it didn't work you know and then take it back apart you know all that extra time spent on it for it to just be one cord, that it's just kind of, I'm glad I got it fixed, I'm really glad I got it fixed, but I wanted to make this testimonial video for you guys in case you guys are going through the same problem. A lot of people have trouble with the Ender 3, uh, with the Z motor, the Z axis, and, and most of the time it is this and the mount for the motor. Almost 99% of the time that people are having trouble with the Creality Ender 3, it's the Z, Z screw, and the Z motor not having that 3D printed mount uh, to help it from you know bending back so far. Uh, eventually, this bends or the motor burns out. That's that's basically 99% of the time. So if if you check both of those, it's uh, try to try to change your wires out. Um, I think the Ender 3 has been down for about a month now because I got to a certain point, and like I said, I'd already checked this in the beginning. I didn't know what it was. I bought these on a whim. I was just like, I'm just going to change out all the wiring. All of it. Just going to change it. And if it's not the wiring, I'm going to buy some of those modules and see if that fixes it. Because I really didn't want to work on the board. I really didn't. Once the board's screwed up, I mean, there can be a ton of things within the board that could be the problem. And so it sucks when you get into that. So I just kind of bought these as a last resort and was just going to change them all out and change the Z one first and it works perfectly fine now so uh, the noise that it was making was just like a and I wish that I would have got this on video and I or I wish I wouldn't have had to cut this because I would have been able to just connected all this back through and showed you what it sounded like um, this basically just goes uh, it doesn't turn like right now it turns it just does this thing where it goes like this and it goes, of course, I'm not a good mimic on the sound of <laughs> a mechanical device that's screwed up. <laughs> but that's basically what it is. So anyways, thank you guys uh, so much for subscribing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And go over and support me on Patreon if you would like. It'd be 
really helpful. And I'm going to show you now. I'm going to hit Auto Home. And it's working perfectly fine. And if you want to, you can just... <laughs> so, works good. Goes up, goes down. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Tell you what, while fixing this thing, this thing right here was handy dandy. This has all of my extra pieces and parts and stuff in it. And, uh... This thing was awesome having it right here under my three buddy number three in drawer. Just to be able to pull out one if I want to and fix this thing and not have to bring out a toolbox or anything. Just all my all of my 3D printing extras are right in there and they fit in there perfectly. So that was cool. Made it a ton easier. Anyways, I'm Bryson Michael RC. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.